We've really been having a lot of fun with these gel blaster surges, playing with family and friends around the house in the backyard. One thing though is if you play at night, you can't really see where your shots are going. You can use tracer rounds. There are glow-in-the-dark gel balls available, but you need some way to light the gel balls up in order for them to fluoresce before they get shot. Now, there are some tracer modules available that fit onto the front of the blasters, and there's actually one for the gel blaster surge, but the kit is like anywhere from $70 to $100 for that. And you really don't need that expense and complexity in order to just make these glow-in-the-dark gel balls light up. What I've found is that you can just use a simple UV LED, which are extremely cheap and available and way too many that I, that I need. And you can use this UV LED inside of the T-piece in there and just wire it into the blaster in parallel with your motor, such that whenever you pull the trigger, the UV LED will light up in the T-piece and it will charge the glow gel balls before they even leave the blaster. Lighting the gels up before they even enter the barrel is actually ideal because they are moving much slower before they enter the barrel, so you'll be able to give them a stronger charge with fewer LEDs, less power, than if you're trying to charge the LEDs on the outside when they're moving at very high velocity, then you need more LEDs and more power to do the same amount of charging of the gels. Most importantly, to do this mod, you're gonna need some UV LEDs. And these UV LEDs are around 395 nanometers, which is right at the violet UV range. You're gonna probably see a little bit of purple glow from these, but they do a really good job of charging the gels. These are three millimeter size, so they're nice and small. They came in a pack of 100 pieces for like $6, so that you could do 100 gel blasters with these. I may even use two per blaster just to get a little more brightness. These LEDs have a forward voltage of 3 volts to 3.2 volts. The two cell lithium battery in the gel blaster surge has a voltage of 7.4 volts nominal. That means that you're going to have to use a current limiting resistor to drop this voltage down to 3 to 3.2 volts from the gel blaster battery. It's very easy to use a formula or an online calculator to calculate which resistor you'll need to use in order to drop the voltage and current. So you want a 20 milliamp current and you want the voltage to be 3 to 3.2 volts. In this case, from a 7.4 volt nominal source, if we're only using one of these LEDs, then we're going to need a 220 ohm resistor in order to keep the voltage and current at the rating of the LED. If we're going to use two LEDs, we're going to wire them in series so that the same amount of current runs through each LED and we're going to use a 68 to 75 ohm resistor for that. The downside of running two LEDs in series is that if one LED burns out for any reason then the other LED won't work either. If you're using two or more LEDs you can also run them in parallel but each one of the LEDs will have to have a 220 ohm resistor attached to the LED so it's just a little bit more work and more components if you run them in parallel versus series. You're going to need some wires, preferably something reddish and black to wire up the LED and the resistor. You're going to need a drill bit that's very close to three millimeters. I'm choosing something that's a little bit under three millimeters so that the LED is going to be a very tight fit when it's going in there. And of course a drill for the drill bit and some super glue to glue in the LED. And last, you're going to need some heat shrink tubing. Since we're going to need a soldering iron to solder the LED to the resistor, to the wires, then we're also going to need to use a little bit of heat shrink tubing to cover up our connections afterwards. Let's get it on and start disassembling this gel blaster. So we've got to remove all the screws first. We're going to slide off the hopper connector. I'm going to remove this fins on top here. And that removes this front part. And now we can carefully open the housing. Trigger popped out there. I think I'm going to flip it over like this so the screws are down. With the gel blaster surge, they have these extra wires that are coming up to the front with some contacts. And earlier I wasn't sure what these were for, but now I'm thinking that they had the intention to add a tracer unit on the front, but I've never seen them offer that as an option yet. So since these wires are probably never going to get used for anything, 
I'm going to go ahead and tap into those and use them to run the LEDs so that I don't have to solder on any new wires. So it's going to be really easy because all I have to do is solder the LEDs onto these wires here. Here is the T-piece and right here is in line with the barrel and you can have a little bit of space above it where I think the first gel is going to be. This part above is just kind of a free floating tube. So this would be a great place to drill the hole. Let me check by dropping some gels in here how far the gels go down because I'd really like to be able to light up the gel that's right before it enters the barrel. So if I put an LED like right here, I'd be lighting up the gel that's second before entering the barrel. If I put the LED down here, kind of aimed upwards, I'd be lighting up that gel that's right about to enter the barrel and it would also be probably putting light up further up so it would be going ahead and charging out the other gels up there. So I'm actually going to drill the hole right here in this area to really light up that gel right before it goes in. The safest way would be to drill and add a LED to this piece right here because this piece is easy to replace with something else if it gets broken or messed up. I'm going to be using a number 33 drill bit, which is 2.87 millimeters, just slightly right under 3 millimeters. The LEDs actually have a little bit of a taper to them, so it'll slide in and start to get tighter the deeper it goes. So it's actually perfect to get be a little bit under 3 millimeters. I'm going to take it and drill at this angle, like right here, kind of an upward angle, and be very careful because I don't want to do any damage to the barrel. Okay, it's breaking through, and you can see it's a little bit above the plunger. So there we go. I've got a sub 3 millimeter hole drilled right above there. I'm going to use a vacuum to get rid of this stuff because I don't want to blow it in there anywhere and screw up anything. I also want to make sure this interior here is smooth on this wall so there's nothing to grab the gels or cause scratch them or break them. You should also clean this hole out with a paper towel that's been soaked in just a little bit of alcohol. Not You don't want it to be dripping because you don't want any alcohol to get in there and get rid of the lubrication. We're just trying to clean the grease out of the hole so that when we glue in the LED there's not going to be any grease there. Let's do a test for the LED. You don't want the LED to go too far into the piece, especially if the T-piece is tight relative to the gels. But if you look at these gels, you're going to see that there's a lot of space, even if I insert the LED all the way in. This hole seems to have become a little bit bigger than I intended, but I'm going to glue the LED in such that it's just barely peeking out, just like that. There's still plenty of space for the gel. It's not going to block the gel. I'm using some thick super glue because I don't want the super glue to run. If you use a thin super glue, it could run into your mechanism and damage stuff and glue stuff together. You could also use a different glue, maybe a hot glue or something to hold on to there as long as there's no lubrication here. There was a lot of lube earlier around that area and the hot glue wouldn't stick. I'm just going to be very careful with this. I'm going to apply just a tiny bit of the super glue and you'll see it's thick. It won't run. It's around the surface. I'm going to put it in here and hold it. Once the LED is glued in and solid, we're going to take these leads here in the front. And it looks like they're long enough to come all the way back here. So we don't even need to reroute them. Just pass them back here. We're going to remove these connectors on here. There's solder, so we should be able to just use a soldering iron to heat them up and the connector will drop off. There we go. When you're hooking up an LED, always pay attention to the polarity of the LED. In this case, there's one lead that's longer than the other. The long lead is positive, the shorter lead is negative, and there's also a flat on one side of the LED, and the flat is on the negative side. See, here's the flat on the shorter lead. Right now, in my configuration, the negative is on the right, the positive is on the left. 
longer lead. The resistor is going to go on the negative side. I'm going to trim these resistor leads down. I'm going to trim down this LED lead so it's also shorter. Here I'm adding a little solder to this lead. I'm going to solder it on to the LED. I'm going to trim the positive lead. Add a little bit of solder to this positive wire. Cut off a section of heat shrink tubing. Slip that over the positive wire first before we solder it. And do the same thing with the black wire. Enough heat shrink tubing that it covers up the resistor. And now it's time to solder on the positive. And then solder the negative. Trim off the sharp point, and now we can pass the heat shrink over to protect it. And you can use a soldering iron to heat this up and heat shrink it. Now that we have the LED soldered, we can put these wires back in place, route them back in here. and then put them down so they're not going to get caught up in anything like the screw boss here. I need to get these metal contacts I removed earlier out of here. Let's give it a test to see if it glows. In this configuration using the wires that went to the front, the LED ends up glowing as soon as the switch is turned on and it stays on. The LED doesn't use a lot of power so this may not be terrible and it might actually uh, make the gels glow brighter, but everything I've read indicates that you don't even need to have the LED on all the time. You just need to have it on when the trigger is being pulled. So we could leave it like this and you just have to make sure to turn it off so it doesn't run down the battery, or we could relocate this wire to run off of the motor. So I'm gonna relocate the wire such that it runs off the motor. So the wire is the smaller diameter of the two here. It's the one that runs up to the front. And I'm just going to clip it to make it easier so I don't have to mess with the soldering on the switch here. Okay, put the switch back in. I'm going to route the wire over to this switch. So I need to strip it back just a little bit. Pull out the switch here. We're going to want to wire it to the side where it's going to the motor. I'm going to add a little bit of solder to this wire and stick it on the switch here. Okay, so it's wired onto the micro switch now. Put the micro switch back down in place. So now when we turn the switch on, that LED is not on, but then when we pull the trigger, the LED should light up. Okay, so now make sure that the wires are all routed properly. The trigger is back in place. <laughs> Oops. Make sure the switches, the micro switch is in the right position, that it's on over the pins. The trigger is back in place. And then we can put the other half of the housing back on. And we'll put all the screws back in now. The trick with these screws is always to back them up a little bit until you feel a click there and then drive it forward so you're not cross threading it. And don't over tighten because it is just plastic so if you over tighten it's going to strip. Alright all the screws are back in. We can put the front piece back on here. Put the fins back on. And then we can put the hopper adapter back on. Make sure it works. You see the UV? Here are the glow gel balls all grown up. And so I've only exposed them to like ambient lighting. 
but they still like glow for a long time even with the lighting turned off. Okay, that's much brighter in the camera than they actually are in real life. They're a lot dimmer than that. This is about what they look like in real life. They look about this bright right now just from the ambient lighting.